Hi, my name's Andrew Sadovoy, and this is Week 5, For Loops and Dictionaries, for the course An Introduction to Interactive Programming in Python, by Joe Warren, John Greiner, Stephen Mong, and Scott Rixner. So dictionaries cannot use mutable types as keys. Um, so what if we have a list that we want to use as a key, such as in this example? So we can see that if we try and do it, we get an unhashable type list error. And so what I wanted to show you is that there's a quick way to, to um, create, to deal with this, and that's uh, to create a tuple from the list. So you just call the tuple function passing in the list as a, as a parameter. And, uh, and that will create a tuple, and then you use the tuple as the key for the list. So we can see that here. If I run it. Okay, so we see over here there is the tuple that was created from the list and it's being used as a key. Now, uh, and if we we can untuple it or convert it back to a list by using the list function. And we print it and you can see that here it is. Okay. So, um, so a couple of caveats. First of all, all of the members inside of the list, all of the elements of the list, they must be mutable in order for this to work. Okay. Um, so if you have a list and it contains only mutable variables, or mut excuse me, mutable values, <laughs> um, then uh, you can just convert it to a tuple and use the tuple as a key. So it's it's handy. Um, now there's no there's no direct way of dealing doing that with um, with a dictionary, and uh, and that's unfortunate. But it is what it is. We have to deal with it. So uh, there is actually something you can do using functions, but it's kind of beyond the scope of what we've covered. So we'll skip it. Now dictionaries make it easy to look up values by key. But it's not easy to look up a key by a value. So what I want to do is show you a way to do that uh, for certain kinds of dictionaries. So suppose we have this this dictionary that I've set up here. Okay. So this is this is quite a long dictionary. It's got uh, 52, 52 values in it. All right. So, um, what we want is we want to be able to say look for uh, the value seventy two and get the the key associated to it. So what this this dictionary has is um, every key is a letter and the value is the ASCII number for that for that letter. Okay. So, given a number, we want to know what the the letter is for that that number. Okay. Um, so we, because we can't do, we can't do, uh, an, there's no way to look up the key value using the, the value. Uh, we have to loop through the list, all right, loop through the dictionary rather, loop through all the key value pairs. When we find the value we're looking for, we get the key, okay? So in this case, we're just going to print it. So when I run this, you'll see that the value that it finds is h. I'm just going to zoom in on that so you can see that it's actually h. Okay. And now, um, what I want to show you is that you can actually do this uh, if the dictionary is one to one. So every so normally a dictionary always has unique keys. That is, every key. Uh, is associated to only one value in the dictionary. But if the reverse is also true, that is, every value is only associated to one key, then you can reverse the dictionary, you can create a reverse of the dictionary, and then you can look up by, in that dictionary, you can look up by value. Or you can, the keys in that dictionary are the values of the first dictionary. So you can look up um, a, uh, in the, the second dictionary, you can look up uh, using 
uh, value from the first dictionary. Okay, let me show you what I'm what I'm saying. So we create a dictionary called reverse, and then we loop through the keys in in uh, in the original dictionary. So here's our original dictionary. All right. So we're going to loop through its keys, and we're going to for each key we're going to add uh, the value in D as the key in reverse, and the 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 value in reverse will be the key from D, and then we just we can just do a, a lookup on reverse, and uh, and when we do that, you'll see that again we get H, okay, which is what we expected from our previous search, okay, and so this is this is um, convenient if D. First of all, if you're doing a lot of sort of reverse lookups um, and your dictionary is one to one, then this is a convenient way of doing uh, doing that. So it's a it's another tool for your toolbox. So for loops, uh, we know that for loops will loop over a sequence of values uh, each time assigning assigning the current element. Uh, to the loop variable. And so the general structure is this. We have the keyword for, then we have loop variable, then we have in, then we have some sequence, then colon, and then the body of the loop. So an interesting feature of this is that the loop variable takes on the structure of the current element in the loop and the structure can be uh, pattern matched. So um, here is an example. We have herring which is going to be a, a list of tuples and I will show you what it looks like here. And so here's what herring looks like. Herring is just a list of tuples, okay? And uh, and it was created using this zip function, and you can look that up in the docs. Um, it's really easy to use. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop over the values in herring. Now herring is, like I said, it's a list of tuples, so this matches the values in herring, right? In other words, every value in herring is going to have this structure. And because of that, we can put this in place. And we could say um, every every um, value in herring, we're going for each value in herring, what we're going to do is take the, f it's going to be a tuple, we'll take the first value of the tuple and we'll store it in x, the second value of the tuple and store it in y. Okay, and then when we when we print this, we'll see that what we get is uh, we get the x value, and then we get the y value multiplied by two. So really straightforward. Let me show you. Okay, so remember that in herring we have a one, b two, c three, d four, and e five. And what we printed out was what we expected: a two, b four, c six, d eight, and e ten. So another example, here we have um, which, this is uh, going to be another list of tuples. I'll show it to you so you can see what it is. Okay, so here is which. So it's a list containing two tuples. Okay, and what we're going to do is loop over it. So we're going to loop over each of the elements in which, which means that each element that we get is going to be a tuple with three values in it. And so we can do the same thing. We know that each value in which is going to have the same structure. It's going to be a tuple with three values, and therefore we can uh, put these 
uh, we can put here a tuple with three variable names in it, and it will each for each loop, it, or for each iteration of the loop rather, it's going to assign um, the tuple, the current element. Uh, it's going to assign each value from that tuple into each of these variables. And so when I print it, you'll see that we get those variables. So we get 1ax, which is the same as the first three uh, values in the first tuple. And then we get 21y, which is the second three. Okay. Again, which was created using zip, and you can take a look at that in the docs. So this is just a handy way of, um, of doing of getting all of the values out of the, uh, or getting sort of more complex structure out of your loop variable, um, and it can it can be useful. So now uh, the last thing I want to talk about is that um, since we can loop over any sequence, it, that means that in particular we can loop over the result of calling a function, provided the function always returns a sequence. So suppose we have a function f that returns a sequence and hang on a second, I'm just going to comment this stuff out. So suppose we have a function uh, f and it returns a sequence and we want to iterate over the sequence and print the values. So we might do this. All right. So indeed, f returns a list, the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and we're iterating over the, the result of calling f. So we're going to iterate over that list. And we're going to print the values. And indeed, we get the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, But this raises an interesting question, and that is, how many times is f actually called? All right, are we calling f? once at the beginning of the loop, or does it call f every iteration of the loop? So what I want to show you is that it's easy to check this. I'm just going to modify f, and I'm going to comment these things out. Um, I modified f so that it includes a print statement, okay, and then it just returns the list as it did before. And then we will loop over f again. Okay. And so now what we see is that uh, in the output we see f is called, and then one, two, three, four, five. Now, if f was being called every iteration, then we would see f is called printed five times. I think you'll agree. So we know from this that f is only called once. Um, and so that's that's important because um, it's it's important to know that you don't need to do something like assign some value y equal to the result of calling f and then loop over the values of y. There's no need to do that. You can just loop over the values of f. That's not immediately obvious. And the second thing to learn here is, of course, that what I've done is I've tested the behavior of, um, of Python um, to using just writing some code and, and seeing the result um, using and uh, functions are a useful tool for doing that so something to keep in mind again another tool for your toolbox hope you enjoyed this and uh, let me know what you think thanks